We want you, Lord, to take control of this service, God, that, that, Lord, that I won't step in your way, Lord Jesus, Lord, that, that I have nothing to do with this, Lord Jesus, but the glory of God, Lord Jesus, begin to take this service over, Lord. Lord, let us begin to fellowship, Lord God. In Malachi, Jesus, it says those who fear the Lord became, and begin to speak to one another. And, and he says that you begin to listen and hear God, Lord Jesus. What was they speaking about, Lord God? It had to be about you, Jesus. It had to be about... What, what was on their mindset, God, and it was to come in and to worship you and you only, Lord Jesus, Lord God. 
It's not about us today, Lord Jesus. It's not about one individually, Lord God. It's not about the praise and worship team leading us and guide us, Lord God. But, but it's us coming, Lord Jesus, to have that mindset of you doing and expect, Lord Jesus, miracles in this house, Lord God. Lord, I pray, God, if we've come with the mindset that, and Lord Jesus, that, that if there's something on our mind, Lord God, that's dragging us down, Lord God, but right now through this prayer and the praise, Lord God, we'll begin to change the atmosphere, Lord God, and, and to bring in you, Lord Jesus, Lord God. Because if you're not here, Lord God, this is just a mere gathering together, Lord God. And nobody here I know Jesus don't want to, Lord God. Everybody here I know God has a, has a heart, Lord God, for you. And Lord Jesus, sometimes we get called up, Lord God. And these things in this world and through the week, Lord God, of working and wrestling and bustling, Lord God, taking care of this and that. But Lord God, I pray right now, Jesus, Lord, that each and everybody in this house will get together, Lord, with that one mindset, Lord God, as they did in the church of Acts, Lord Jesus, that brought in, Lord God, the day of the house, Lord. Lord Jesus, we begin to just take your service over, Lord God. Lord, we got people, Lord Jesus, that's on his prayer request, Lord. Lord God, we need to have that mindset, Lord God. We need to have a mindset, Lord God, to, to see the power of intercessions of Lord Jesus. Lord, there's just not people in this house, God, but people across seas and, and other countries, Lord God, that need us, Lord Jesus. And Lord, if we don't have a mind made up, Lord Jesus, to serve you, God, Lord Jesus, they need our prayers, Lord God. Lord Jesus, let's just, let's just begin to, to let you move, Lord God. Let's just take our time this morning. Lord, I don't know what we have planned, Lord God. But Lord, I know it wasn't planned for me to come up here and lead the service. So God, I'm going to leave it to you, Lord Jesus. Lord, leave it to you, God, Jesus, to begin to, Lord, just begin to take our time, Lord God, and enter in your presence, God. Lord Jesus, whatever you want us to, to do, Lord God, just lead and guide us, Lord Jesus. Lord, I know, God, that, Lord Jesus, if we just give you all of our heart and all of our mind today, Lord Jesus. Lord, I know, God, that there's a lot of people, Lord God, that don't that don't feel good here today, Jesus. Lord, they're sick, Lord God, it's been a rough winter, Lord Jesus. And I know, God, Jesus, Lord, the pastor prophesied, Lord God, that this year is going to be a year of jubilee, Lord God. And I know sometimes, Lord Jesus, the way it starts out, God, it's not the way it's going to end. But I know, Lord God, that there's going to be some people in this house, Lord God, begin to get into that rest, Lord Jesus, if we can begin to have heart, Lord Jesus. Lord, that scripture in Galatians that Paul spoke about, do not grow weary in doing good. In due seasons you will reap if you do not lose heart. I begin to think about that scripture. And what makes us lose heart? What makes us grow weary and doing good it's sure uh, the things that we want but but I know sometimes oh God this world this world brings us down God and, and Lord Jesus sometimes we just we grow weary and doing that good thing and we lose heart but God won't begin to think about the purpose that you have for us oh God Lord I begin to search the scriptures and it says in Jeremiah that you had an everlasting love. It's a love that you loved us before you even created the world that you had us on your mind, Lord. And the Word says that you didn't even know us. Or, Lord Jesus, that we didn't even know, God, that, that you had a plan for us. Lord Jesus, Lord, I want to know, oh God, what my plan is and what each and every plan here is for each and everybody, God. Lord Jesus, help us today, Lord God, to see that purpose in our heart, Lord. Lord, to know, God, your ways, Jesus. Lord, I just praise you today, Lord Jesus. I praise you this morning, Lord God. Lord Jesus, give us that heart, Lord God, to see those, Lord, that's lost, Lord. See them saved, Jesus. Lord God, open our minds, Jesus. Lord God, open our mind and our hearts, Jesus. Lord, I just praise you, God. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, begin to worship him and praise him, Jesus. Lord, begin to worship and praise him here this morning, Lord God. Lord Jesus, we praise you, God. We praise you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord. 
Lord, we praise you, God. We praise you, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Move in this place, Lord Jesus. Move, Lord God. Lord, move, Jesus. Move, Lord. Lord, we don't need a lot of words, God. We just need some people to worship you, Lord God. We need some people that'll praise you, God. Lord, I don't need to list the names of people that, Lord God, our minds is not in a place, Lord God, to deliver these people. We need to have our minds in a place, God, where we speak those names out, Lord God, that, Lord, miracles will happen. And, Lord Jesus, Lord, that we'll have that faith. Lord Jesus, Lord, let us take our time this morning, God. Let us take our time, God, and just so you be Jesus. Lord God, let us begin to worship you today, Jesus. Oh God, you are you are it all, Jesus. Lord, you laid it all on the line, God. Oh Jesus, there's nowhere in the word that says that God was lonely. Or anywhere in the word that God needed us for anything. It's because he loved us with everything he needed. That he began to create us. Because he wanted someone to love. And he had a plan. He knew that we was going to fall. Yeah. Fall into this sin. But still we had a plan, Lord God, to wrap yourself in that, in that flesh, Lord God, and begin to, begin to be tortured and mocked. Oh, God. What a great God you love to speak, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, I just pray, God, that we could just soak it in our minds, Lord God, of what you've done. Lord, there's nothing about us, Lord God. There's nothing yeah. about us nothing about me, God. But God, it's all about you. And Lord, you made it all about us. That's why, God, we should make it all about you. Because, God, you made it all about us first. You loved us first, God. And I pray, God, that we can love you, Jesus, with that same love. Lord, that we can walk, Lord Jesus, in the past, oh God, that you have given us, oh God. Lord Jesus, God, I praise you, Lord. Lord, I praise you, Jesus, Lord. Lord, there's people in this house that needs delivered. There's people in this house, oh God, that, that sick and need healed, oh God. And Lord Jesus, if you're not in here, Lord, Lord, if you're not in this room, oh God, we can't do it alone, Jesus. Lord, we can't do it alone, oh God. There's nothing about us, God, that can do anything. But, Lord God, the greater one on the inside of us, Jesus. Lord, that you live on the inside of us, God. You're the one, Lord God, that can work through us, Jesus. Lord, begin to work through us, Lord God. Begin to work through the ones, Lord Jesus, that, that Lord, we had no clue, Lord God, that you was working through, Lord. Lord, let them step up, Lord God. Lord Jesus, I pray that you begin to rise them up, Lord God. Begin to rise people up in this church, Lord God, to step forward, Lord, to do your work, Jesus. Lord, we even had no clue, Lord God, they can do it, Lord Jesus. Amen. But, Lord God, because they was available for you, Jesus, the ability became, Lord God, your ability, Jesus. Lord God, begin to live inside of them, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, and we praise you, God. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for this Spirit. Lord, as we get ready to come up here, Lord, in a, in a, in a, in a presence, Lord God, to begin to pray and, and lift these people's names up, Lord. Lord Jesus, not just to say a name, Lord God, to know, Lord, that these are the people, Lord, that you love, Lord God, and care for, and that, and that you died for, Lord Jesus. Lord God, that we can lift those people's names up, God. Lord Jesus, Lord. Jackie Counts Jr., Lord, needs to move. Brian Counts, Angela Hatfield, Lord God, you know their needs, Lord Jesus. Gloria Counts, Lord God, you know her, Lord, you know her needs, Jesus. Solid Dad, Matthew, uh, don't know, son, lost of the husband. Uh, can't really read that name, but Lord Jesus, you know. David Stafford, Lord God. And old Dawes and Savannah Dawes Franklin. And we have a praise report right here. It says Victoria No King, Lord. And that's right in the middle of this paper, Lord. Yeah. And I praise you for that, Lord God. Yes, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you, God. Lord Jesus.
Jesus, you are our God that still moves, Lord God. Lord, we praise you, Jesus, for that, Lord God. I don't know that situation, God, but I know it says that no leukemia. That's my God. He says no to those things, Lord God. He, his name is higher than any name that you can even think of. Yes, God, we thank you for that praise report, Lord God. We have an unspoken prayer request, Lord God, and I know there's a lot more here. Jerry Lee, Lord Jesus. Charlie was great. Belinda's granddaughter. Uh, Pam Clay with the heart attack, if that's right. Michelle and family and Bree as she travels back, Lord God, begin to protect her, Lord Jesus, Lord, on her way home, Lord. Ron and Donna Margaret, Lord Jesus. Lord, church, begin to remember the people in this church, Lord. They need us, Lord God. The sisters sick. Begin to lift them up, Lord Jesus. As we come up here, Lord God, and, and lift our prayers up for these people. Y'all make y'all's way up here in a, in a mind of worship and praise, Lord God. That, Lord, that God will move upon each and every prayer. Yes. Yes. Amen. Folks, we invite you to come. Come on. Bring your petitions before the Lord. Amen. Bring it before God that those who hid from the beginning. God that is well able. Hallelujah. Father, we're thankful again today for your love, your mercy, your goodness. Again, we're thankful today for the love of God that has been shed upon our hearts by the Holy Ghost today. We're thankful that you demonstrated your love that while we were yet a sinner you died for us and we're thankful today for the love your love that is unchanging and your love that is unconditional we we'll give you praise today we do that you loved us like you've loved us you loved us so much that you refused to live without us you gave your life a ransom for me I'm thankful today that you saw some good in me I'm thankful today that you called me. I'm thankful that you that you you chose me, and I'm thankful that you that you justified me, and I'm thankful that one day you're going to glorify me. And I give you praise today. I do. I am so thankful and grateful today for your presence in our lives today. I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit today. I'm thankful Jesus that you sent the Comforter. I'm thankful that you sent our Helper. You sent one that you said would never leave us, but would be with us and dwell in us forever. I'm so thankful today for the precious Holy Spirit. And I know that you called the Spirit true. And I'm thankful today that, that He's here. And I'm thankful that He's in us today. And Lord, we give you praise today. We do. Father, I, I plead the blood over this meeting today. My prayer today is that every, every individual here today I pray we'll make the right choice in this room today. Father, we stand today in need. We stand today in need. We can leave different than what we came here today if we'll make the right choice, if we'll make the right decision here today, if we'll decide that we're going to serve you, if we'll decide that we're going to walk with you. Today I pray that, that decisions will be made that will affect their eternal destiny. This is where we prepare for eternity. My prayer today is that every heart here today will be turned and open to you. And every year will be open today. Help us, I pray, oh God, that as we gather here today, that we'll not gather here. Father, take this meeting lightly because we'll never meet like this again this side of heaven, never. Today, I, I pray that we can make eternal decisions that we need to make in our life here today. Every need on that prayer list, Lord, I bring before the throne of God. Every need I know you know. Every individual I know you know. For you knew them for the foundations of the world. And I'm thankful and grateful today to know that you know every physical infirmity on that list. You know every unsaved individual on that list. You know every need that is there. That's why we bring them before the throne of God. That's why we call their name out. Because we know that we have representation there in heaven today. We know that your word assures us that Jesus is in the presence of God for us today. He's there this day as our mediator, as our advocate. He's there today ever living to intercede for us. 
He's there today as our high priest that can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And today we, we give you honor, today give you praise. Holy Ghost, we invite you to come. We need you this meeting today. So come, will you help us here today that this, that this ground will become holy ground. That, that as we have gone to this place and as, we, as we've asked you to prepare this ground today, we invite you to come. I pray that every believer in this room here today will choose the act of worship. That we will raise our hands and open our, our mouth in praise. We will honor you here today in our worship. That we will just love you here today like there's going to be no tomorrow. Well, this could very well be our last meeting this side of heaven. Father, my prayer today is that every believer will leave this building today when it's all said and done and they'll know that they've given you their best. They'll know that they've given you honor, praise, and worship here today. Oh, I, I know your word assures us that you are seeking those that will worship you. So come, Holy Spirit, and help us as a body of believers here today that we can uplift the name of the Lord Jesus here today. That when all this is said and done, that we'll know that we've been in the presence of the Most High God. So come, come, and help us here today that the atmosphere can be right for miracles to happen today in this room. And Father, we'll give you praise for everything that is accomplished here today in this house. We'll give you praise. In Jesus, I did I did that. How did it? Ushers, if you get it, take the money out.
Tell me what 
Show 
Yes. One more time. Just a little bit. One more time. Just one more time. Last one. Whisper, whisper, whisper in my ear. Bye, bye, bye. Tell, Tell me. me words I thought I'd never hear. Bye, bye, bye. Yes. Show me, show me, show me what you see. Ah, Holy Ghost, help us. Illuminate what's right in wow. front of me. Wow, wow, wow. Sing it, girl. Sing that thing one more time. Sing it. Sing it. Whisper, sing. whisper, oh, whisper my. in my ear. Oh, Holy Ghost, come, 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 come. I'm your sheep, so you're my flock. Oh, come, 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 Consume so, so. my heart, reveal yourself ah, to me. Ah, ah. Yes. Yes. yes, Whisper, whisper, whisper yes. in my ear. Wow. Tell me words I thought I'd never show hear. Me, show me, show me, show me what you see. Illuminate what's right in front of me. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, ah, ah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus said, He said, when the Spirit of truth is come, He will guide you into all truth. He will speak only what He hears. And He will show you things that are to come. Do you know that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit? Do you know that's who's on the inside of you? He, he's the Spirit of truth. You have the Spirit of truth living on the inside of you that Jesus said would guide you into all truth. And He will speak only what He hears. Only what He hears. And he said he would go one step farther. He would show you those things which are to come. Wow. That's the paraclete. That's the one Jesus called the comforter. That's why he told his disciples, it's to your advantage that I go away. For I don't go away, I, I can't send the comforter. But when the spirit of truth is come, oh, hallelujah. He's going to guide you in all truth. Hallelujah. You've got a built-in GPS on the inside of you. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. But he'll, he'll, he'll tell you when you're about to take the wrong turn. Talk to me, somebody. If you're his sheep and you'll hear his voice, he's talking. It's not that he's not talking. He's always talking. He's always talking. Always speaking to his people. But we are the ones that are hard of hearing sometimes. Because we get busy doing our own little thing. We all like sheep have gone astray. We're all just alive. <coughs> Amen, preacher. Aren't you glad for the Holy Spirit today? Aren't you glad for that one that's living on the inside of you that, that will guide you to all truth? Amen. I don't know about you, but I'll I tell you one thing. He sure saved my... I better use the right word. I better not use that word. He sure saved me from a lot of trouble. Amen. 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 He's, 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 he's been, see, he's been my helper from day one. From the moment I got born again, he's been my helper. Amen. 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 Helped me through some very rocky places in life. Amen. He guided me through some steep places that otherwise I would have failed Amen. and probably would not have gotten back up. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's my guy. Amen. But you see, you've got to talk to your guide. You've got to have a relationship with the person on the inside of you. And the Holy Ghost is the most neglected person of the Godhead. Do you know that? Oh, you ain't want to go be now. You, we, 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 we'll, I mean, we'll call Him Father and we'll, uh, we'll pray in Jesus' name. But for some reason, a lot of folk, a lot of Christian folk, they don't have a relationship with the Holy Ghost. And He's the one on the inside of you. 
He's the one in charge of the affairs of the kingdom of God on this earth. The Holy Ghost is. You need to have a relationship with the one on the inside of you. His name is Holy Ghost. He's not an it. He's a he. He is Holy Ghost. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He talked to him. If you're his sheep, you can hear his voice. If you're listening. If you're listening. Give him a good head clap of praise, would you? Amen. Come on, give him a bit of praise for that. Come on, you, 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 you can, I mean, you can get that. He blessed you then for that. Yes, he has. He blessed you a lot better than you're asking about him now. If you, if you really had to give him a praise for the blessing he's put on your life and what he's done for you and brought you from, I mean, you can do better than what you're doing. Hallelujah. I mean, you can look back over your life and find out who you were and where you are right now. Oh, he ought to bring a praise upon your lips. The quietest person in this room ought to be praising him right now. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Lord, I bless your name today. I glorify your, your high and holy name. I magnify you. I glorify you. I edify you. Thank God Almighty. You're chosen of the Most High God. And those who be chosen, he called. And those who be called, he justified. And those who be justified, he glorified. Is anybody called in this room? Has anybody chosen in this room? Is anybody glad to be justified in this room? Has anybody glad to be glorified in this room today? Jesus is the reason that we gather and the reason that we can raise our hands in prayer and magnify His name today. All because of a man called Jesus. Hallelujah. He's an awesome God. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Blessed be God. I'm sorry to disturb the order service, but um, while praise and worship was going on, the Lord dropped something in my spirit. And Heather, I hate to single you out, but you make a beautiful mother. Yes. I don't think that uh, my wife was more beautiful than when she was praying with my son. There's just something about you mothers. There's a glow about you. There's a presence about you. Amen. Amen. And when you were leaping upon the stage... It made me think of that Mary, the mother of our Savior, Jesus Christ. She received a visit from an angel, and the angel told her that she was going to have a baby. And within that message, the angel also told her that her cousin Elizabeth was also pregnant, which was also a miracle in itself. So most of you should be familiar with that passage of Scripture. <clears throat> but when I saw <laughs> Heather up there, just she was leaping because of something inside of her. A presence inside of her. And I want to read you just a short piece of scripture here and I'll turn it over to Pastor. In Luke chapter 1, which is where the story took place, Luke's account of uh, Mary's visit from the angel. Uh, on down to verse 41, it said, Come on. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard, see, Mary went to see Elizabeth. The angel said, your, your cousin's pregnant. She went to see Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation or the greeting of Mary, whoo, the baby leaped in her womb. Yeah. Amen. The baby, John. That's who Jesus loved. He loved John. Oh, what a world changer John was. The baby leaped in the womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women. Blessed are you, girl. Yes. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? The babe leaped in the womb. Yes. I believe that's symbolic of Jesus said, Son, daughter, leap to me. Trust me. Amen. You know, we get in our comfort place. We get so secure in our place as we stand there. And we think, I remember the day I got saved in 2003. Jesus was saying it to me. Leap to me. Come to me. Trust me. Yeah. And sometimes in our carnal mind, we view it as jumping off of a rock cliff. If I do this, my life is over. It'll never be the same. Uh, we're afraid. We're afraid of what we don't understand. But what we see in our mind is jumping off of a rock cliff. 
Jesus sees in His mind as you jumping into His bosom, jumping into His hands, in His arms for Him to love you, for you to trust Him. It's about trust. That presence. The babe leaped in the womb and she received the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. What an awesome moment that must have been for Elizabeth. And then John is like, there He is. John was already six months old in the womb. Jesus had just... Be... See, we're, when we get saved, we're impregnated with something. There's, there's, there's something inside of us that we get impregnated with. And it calls to us. It calls us to jump and to leap. To trust Him. But we don't. Why is that? Why is that? We, have, we want to see miracles take place. We want to see miracles in our own life take place. A conversation I had this morning with someone. The movie of The Wizard of Oz. We all know that story. Every one of us has seen it from kids. Dorothy is troubled. She's a troubled teen. She wants to run away from home. She gets caught up in a storm, and the storm takes her away. While away, all she wants is to go back home. She hears about this man that's great and powerful Oz. He's got the power to return you home. So she finds him. He's going to take her home in his balloon, take her back to, to Kansas where she came from. But she received a visit, and this is just a, a, an example of what I'm saying. She receives a visit from the good witch. And the good witch tells her, Dorothy, you've had the power all along. The shoes, it's in the shoes. I'm not saying we have the spiritual power in our shoes, but you understand what I'm saying. We have that power within us all along, and we don't use it. Why? Because our carnal mind makes us think that we need to do something else to get this miracle to take place. But all the while, it's just about being in His presence and trusting Jesus. That's all it's about. Leap, leap to that jump into His presence. You understand what I'm trying to say? The babe leaped. Thank you, Heather. Thank you for being obedient to Jesus and doing what you do. I love you so much. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. 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 Angels bow before Him. Amen. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. All right, let's go to Children's Church. Who's going downstairs for a scope? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. God is good. God is awesome. What an awesome God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. This should be cool. Amen. Amen. Awesome presence. Awesome presence. Awesome presence. Amen. 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 You got your Bibles? Go with me to First Samuel, chapter number thirty. First Samuel chapter number 30 this morning. First Samuel chapter number 30. I'm going to read to you a very, very familiar story. Terry got a lot of echo up here. I don't know what you got to do to fix me, but fix me some way. First Samuel chapter number 30. First Samuel chapter number 30. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You know what would be nice? You know what I think we need to do? Give you a break. Let's stand for the reading of the word this morning. Let's do it. Come on. Let's give honor to the word and stand as we read this word this morning. Give you a chance to stretch your feet, stretch you out, and get woke up a little bit, and get ready to receive the engrafted word of God. Amen. Amen. That's able to save your souls. Praise God. Amen. First uh, Samuel chapter number thirty. Verse number one. Let's read. And it came to pass, when David and his men were come to Ziglag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south, and Ziglag, and smitten Ziglag, and burned it with fire, and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away, and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city. Behold, it was burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters 
were taken captives. Mm -hmm. David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. Verse 6, And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the Hippah. And Abathar brought hither the Hippah to David. David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he, God, answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. Verse 18, And David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away, and David rescued his two wives. <coughs> and there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither small nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all. Father, we thank You for Your Word. Add Your blessing upon it. Anoint this preacher that I can speak through great oracles of God. Amen. Open our ears and our hearts to be open to Your Word here today. Touch those here today. Father, encourage those that are in this room today. Let us leave here changed by Your Word. Amen. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord today. Thank You for standing for the reading of His Word. I read you this morning a very, very familiar story. And most of you in this building are familiar with, with David's Zig-like experience. I've had the privilege to preach from this text of Scripture many times down through the years. As you will notice in the story, as we open the story up, that the enemy had invaded David's territory and had taken his possessions. Now his possessions not only... Do I mean the material things? But also the Bible reveals that the enemy had taken his wives and children. In verse 5 it says that both of David's wives were taken. And the scripture says that David then inquired at the Lord saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And God answered David and said, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them. And without fail, <coughs> rescue all. Now what I want you to notice, notice the order. Pursue, overtake, recover all. Pursue, overtake, recover all. So this morning I want to take this story. And I want to talk to you a little while today upon this thought. The pain of recovery. Wow. The pain of recovery and recovery from the pain. Look at me. Look at me. There is pain in the recovery. But thank God there is recovery from the pain. Well, that right there ought to make everybody happy right there. I believe every one of us will find ourselves somewhere in this word today. As we talk about the pain of recovery and recovery from the pain. First statement on the screen, I want to go jump right in the middle of this thing. Listen to this preacher. You cannot have recovery without pain. There is always pain in the recovery. Always. Without exempt. Ask any alcoholic. Ask any any uh, uh, anyone that's in a detox clinic. and uh, Ask any drug addict and they'll assure you. That you cannot have recovery without pain. Talk to anyone that's recovered from a bitter divorce. And they will also tell you, be very quick to tell you. You cannot have recovery without pain. Talk to anyone that's been caught up in an adulterous affair. And they'll be quick to tell you. You cannot have recovery without pain. There's always pain in the recovery. There's always pain in the recovery. Always pain in recovery. Pain is part of the process to recovery. 
pain is part of the process to recovery. You cannot have recovery without pain. You cannot have recovery without pain. There is pain in the recovery. That is a guarantee. But there is recovery from the pain. There is always pain in the recovery. But there is not always recovery from the pain. Well, I'm going to throw you one here now. I said there is always pain in the recovery. But there is not always recovery from the pain. Because recovery... Recovery deals with a choice. You can choose to recover or you can choose to hold on to the pain and become bitter instead of better and become defeated instead of overcoming. Recovery is a choice. There is always pain in the recovery. But thank God there's recovery in the pain. But there's not always recovery in the pain. Because recovery has to do with the choice. Come on, talk to the preacher, somebody. Some of y'all need to talk to the preacher this morning now because don't make me have to call you out by name here today because some of y'all been there, done that, and you bought the hat and the t-shirt and know exactly where I'm at right now. Or some of you have to live what I'm talking about right now. Watch now, watch. Before David's recovery, guess what there was? Pain. The scripture says that David and his men wept until they had no more power to weep. And the Bible says that David was greatly, greatly distressed. For the people spake of stoning David because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his son and every man for his daughters. And before God gave David the word to pursue, overtake, and without fail recover all. I got to tell you one more time. There was the pain. You cannot have recovery without the pain. But you can but you can recover from the pain. The scripture says that, that David and his men came to the city of Ziklag and they found that he was burned with fire. And the wives and their and their sons and their daughters were taken. Taken captive. Taken. Have you ever had anything taken? Not necessarily stolen, but have you ever had anything? Taken from you. Some of you know what it is to have something taken. Some of you in this building, you know what it is to have your spouse taken through death. Some of you know what it is to have your marriage taken through divorce. You may be here this morning and you may be, you may be one of those that, 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 that have had their innocence taken or your virginity taken. You may be one of those here today that your dream has been taken because of a pregnancy out of wedlock. Maybe you're one of those whose parents were taken from you at an early age because of death or divorce. Maybe some of you have had your health taken because of a stroke or, 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 or cancer or some disease in your body. Have, have you ever had anything taken? Oh, some of you in this house hear this preacher some of you in this house you, you've had some of those things taken that I just mentioned and others of you have had things taken that I did not mention but the thing of it is they were taken and once they were taken then the pain of recovery began and some of you pressed through you pressed through the pain and ended up in recovery. The pain you didn't realize. But the pain became the fuel. That propelled you to press on through. To the recovery. Yes there was pain in the recovery. But thank God there was recovery from the pain. And none of us in this room. Like to experience pain. None of us. Or adversity. And when adversity and pain comes. Because of what the enemy has taken. You need to understand the role of an enemy in the hands of your God. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Amen. If you don't understand the purpose of an enemy, then your enemy will come and your enemy will conquer you and defeat you. Amen. On the screen. The enemy is part of God's plan. Without the enemy, you can't get to your purpose. You cannot get to your destiny without an enemy. Why? Because an enemy causes movement. Notice the process. Pursue. Overtake. 
recover. Before the recovery, there was the pursuing and the overtaking. Movement. 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 And one thing I've learned down through the years of pastoring is this. That once trouble and adversity comes and the pain comes, one of two things the pain will do. It will cause you to move to God or cause you to move from God. It will cause you to move to the Word or from the Word. It will cause you to move to the church or from the church. But an enemy causes movement, good or bad, to or from. You can't get to your purpose. You can't get to your destiny. You cannot get to your recovery without an enemy or without pain. There is pain in the recovery. Yes, there is. But there is recovery from the pain. Hallelujah. Think about this. The door of recovery. Because that's, that's what we're all pursuing toward. Because every one of us has experienced pain in some area of our life more so for others than some are in this room today. Amen. But you think about this. The door of recovery is always guarded by an enemy. Always. The door of purpose, the door of your, of your destiny is guarded by an enemy. It's like these brink armored trucks that you see on the road. They have guards riding on the inside of them. Now, why are there guards there? The guards are there to protect the treasure that is in the armored truck. The thief doesn't want the truck. The thief wants the treasure that's in the truck. Hallelujah. Paul said it like this in 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. Paul says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. And the enemy wants to stop the treasure in your life from being exposed. But he can't. You know why he can't? Because Paul said, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Uh, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Uh, that's why Paul said, and if God be for us, uh, who can be against us? Hallelujah. The enemy cannot stop the treasure from being exposed because the power is of God and not of us. Amen. Hallelujah. And what demon or devil is big enough to stop our God? Talk to me somebody. God will use the enemy to serve his plan and to serve his purposes. Whatever face or whatever name the enemy may carry or appear to be in the hands of our God, what the enemy meant for pain, God will use for gain. If you will pursue, you will overtake, it, and without fail, you will recover. Hallelujah. Well, we start getting somebody help me praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. When something is taken by the enemy, the enemy is trying to discover what's in you. Because he sees something in you that he doesn't like. Help me, Holy Ghost. The enemy is looking at you and he has seen everything that he has done to you, but it has not stopped you. And your progress, your movement, your pursuing is proof to the enemy that you will overtake and you will, without fail, recover. Your movement, your pursuit is proof to the enemy that you will pass through the pain. You will press through the pain. You will reach your destiny. You will reach your purpose with or without the person that started with you, with or without what you began with. You will pursue and overtake and recover by the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to me. Now, I know you don't have, you act like you, I know y'all are kind of like dead right now. But if you would be honest with me, every one of you in this building, you've already found yourself right here in this word today. Already. Some of you are in pain right now. Some of you just got through some pain. Some of you are pursuing toward recovery right now. And some of you are already in recovery. But this word has already found you. And you ought to praise God because you're going through or you're going through. You're pursuing and you will overtake and you will recover. Thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. I didn't come here 
just to be just to be seen today, but I come here to speak a word over somebody in this room here today that has an ear to hear from God Almighty. And here's the word. The word came to me this morning, and God told me to tell some of y'all that the enemy is getting anxious over some of you. He knows his time is limited in your life. That oh, and you're moving forward. You're pursuing this proof in spite of pain. You're going to press through in spite of the pain. You're going to overtake and recover. Yes, there is pain in recovery. But thank God there's recovery in the pain. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can you not see? Or do you not understand that the, that, that the enemy has caused you to move from one season to another? Amen. Talk to me somebody. Amen. Can you not see that? The Bible says there, the, the Bible says to everything there is a season. Can you not look back and see in your life as the enemy has not caused you to move from one season to another? Can you not see the enemy was needful for an exit and an entrance? Well, can I prophesy over somebody this morning that has an ear for prophecy? Can I prophesy over somebody this morning that reached out and grabbed his thing? The Lord sent me here to prophesy this over somebody in this room here now. He sent me to tell you this. That your season is about to end. Your pain is about to turn into gain. And your enemy has caused you to move to another season. And there is an exit and an entrance. And you're getting ready to exit one season of pain and enter into a season of gain. There is pain in recovery. But thank God there's recovery from the blood from the pain and because you refuse to give up because you you pursued because you refuse to allow the pain to take you out of the game you're about to enter a season of recovery have we got anybody out there that has an ear to grab that and say thank God my season's over thank God weeping may you do it for a night but joy it cometh in the morning hallelujah praise God Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The door of recovery is always guarded by an enemy. Yes. Moses had a Pharaoh. David had a Goliath. Elijah had an Ahab and a Jezebel. Jesus had a Judas. They all went through the pain of recovery. But they all recovered from the pain. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if I got anybody in there. Throughout this entire Bible, it reveals our enemies. But it also reveals that there are benefits of an enemy in the hands of our God. <laughs> Some of you pursue, listen to me. You refuse to allow the pain to take you out of the game. I said some of you refused to allow the pain to take you out of the game and you pursued and you overtook and you're in your recovery and look at me, look at me and like David, you ended up with more or better than what you started with like old Job, your latter end is a whole lot better than your beginning have I got anybody in here talking to me right now? have I got anybody listening to me in this building? The reason you're better now than you was is because you refuse to allow the pain to take you out of the game. Yeah. You continue to pursue. And in your pursuit, you finally begin to overtake. And you begin to recover. Yeah. Now that little word all in our text is italicized. It's not in the original language, so I'll leave it off because you may not recover all, but you will recover. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. As long as I can recover, I can regain my composure and get up and go one more time. Hallelujah. And wait on through the darkness and wait on through the midnight hour if I can only recover. And the pain sometimes that comes into our lives, it is so intense that we want to give up. We allow the pain sometimes to take us out of the game. But you can't allow the pain to take you out of the game because if you continue to pursue, you will overtake. And you'll find yourself in recovery. Can I get a witness in this house? Can I get a witness in this house? Listen to me. When the pain came, when the enemy had taken, the Bible says, listen to me, very key Frank, very key right here now. The Bible says that when the pain came, when the pain came, and when the enemy had taken, 
And they had no more power to weep. The Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. The recovery process requires strength. And David encouraged, strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. Hear this preacher. You've got to strengthen yourself in the Lord. You have to strengthen yourself in the Lord. The preacher may not be there. Your prayer partner may not be there. The choir may not be there. The praise team may not be there. Your mama may not be there. Your daddy may not be there. Your husband may not be there. Your wife may not be there. But sometime along the way, you have to encourage, strengthen yourself in the Lord, your God. David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? The word of the Lord came back and said, pursue. Pursue for you shall surely overtake them without fail. Recover. And David not only recovered all that was taken from Ziglag, but the enemy had invaded several other cities prior to David catching up with them and his men. And then David and his men not only got back what was taken from, from them, but also all the other stuff, all the other spoil that was taken from the other cities. They took all the flocks and herds of cattle and so forth. David had recovered so much stuff, so much stuff that he not only gave to the 400 men with him, but to the 200 that stayed behind. And not only that, but once he returned back to Ziglag, once he returned back to Judah, he had recovered so much stuff that he sent some of the spoil throughout the land. Judah, Ramoth, and Hormoth, and other places the Bible reveals. David had so much stuff that he sent it all throughout the land, blessing people with the spoil that he carried from that, from that battle. Look at this. Look at this on the screen. David never allowed the pain to take him out of the game. And the reason some of you right now are better off than where you was, hallelujah to the Lamb of God, boy, I'm about to have a calendar spell, is because you never allowed the pain to take you out of the game. You kept on coming back. You kept on pursuing. You kept on coming back. You kept on praising the Lord. You kept on raising your hands. You kept on coming back and kept on coming back. You didn't know what you were pursuing. And what you were pursuing, you didn't realize, but you began to overtake it. It wasn't going to overtake you because the pain you refused to allow to make you out of the game and you continue to pursue and you continue to overtake and now thank God hallelujah to the Lamb of God you are recovered from the pain hallelujah you've recovered and some of you are more blessed now ah <laughs> oh, y'all don't want to talk to me now Y'all want to talk to me now, and you was the one that messed it all up, but you're still more blessed than you was when you started. I wish I'd get a witness out somebody in this house here right now, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hey, praise God. Yes, there's pain in recovery, but thank God there's recovery from the pain if you'll continue to pursue. Soon you'll overtake, and soon you'll recover. I got some recovering addicts in this room here right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm not talking about drug addicts and alcohol. I'm talking about an, that, that all of us was an addict to sin at one time. All of us was a sinner at one time. But thank God I got to recover it. I said, thank God I got to recover it. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I've been redeemed. Glory to God. Been redeemed. Been redeemed. Been redeemed. Been redeemed. Been redeemed. David never allowed the pain to take him out of the game. He encouraged himself in the Lord. He strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. You know what he did? He got a word from the Lord. <laughs> he got, why do you come here? You come here to get a word from the Lord. Well, you got one today already. He got a word from the Lord. Listen, 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 listen. And his first instruction was pursue. In spite of the pain, pursue. In spite of the loss, pursue. Pursue toward recovery. You can't have recovery without pain. But you can recover from the pain. Pursue. I know it gets hard. I know you get frustrated. I know I know you're in pain. But keep on walking. When they lie on you, keep on walking. No matter who walks out on you, keep on walking. When you get the bad report, keep on walking. When the pain is at its peak, keep on walking. Pursue, overtake, and without fail, recover. David said it like this. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Hallelujah! 
hallelujah, when you're in the valley, keep on walking. When you feel like you're going to die, keep on walking. When you feel like you're in the darkness of life, keep on walking. When you feel like you can't put one foot in front of another, keep on walking. Keep on walking. Keep on walking. And if you'll keep on pursuing, you'll overtake and you'll, you'll recover. Some of y'all ain't here right now. And the only reason you're here is because you kept on walking. Can I get a witness over there on that second pew over against the wall? Some of y'all here right now, bless the Almighty God, because you kept on walking. Hallelujah. Oh, hey, you kept on walking. It got hard. The pain got hard. Yes, it did. My heart broke. I was broken to pieces, but I kept on walking. I kept on pursuing. I kept on walking. Amen. Pretty soon. I began to overtake it instead of it overtaking me. Amen. <laughs> because I refused to allow the pain to take me out of the game, I ended up in recovery. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Yes, there is pain in the recovery. Yes, there is. It's guaranteed. There's always pain in the recovery. But thank God. Thank God if you'll continue to pursue, you'll overtake and you'll recover from the pain. I've got anybody in this room that can talk to me right now. I've got anybody here to talk to me. I tell you something, let me, let, let me do this just so I know I'm in the house of the living God. If you have recovered, I want you to give Him some praise right now. And if you're right now on your way to recovery, I want you to give Him some praise right now. And everything that has that praise ye the Lord. I know it's hard, but keep on walking. I said I know it's hard, but keep on walking. I said I know it's hard, but keep on walking. I said I know it's hard, but keep on walking. Keep on walking. Keep on walking. Hallelujah. Why, preacher? Well, I'll tell you why. El Gummo. <laughs> why do you need to keep on walking? Amen. On the screen. Because God does His best work in the hard time, buddy. Amen. Hallelujah. And some of y'all will even proof of that right now. See, I ought to get enough praise out of some of y'all right there on that right there. Some of y'all should have been up praising God right there because God does some of His best work in the hard times. And some of you pressed into pain in this building into recovery. And God came through. Amen. Hallelujah. You went through the lonely nights. Yes, sir. You went through the uncertain situations. You went through the financial setbacks. You went through the sickness and disease in your body. You went through the marital problems. You even went through the divorce. You even went through death. And the list can go on and on and on. But some of you can look back over your life right now and realize... That God done some of His greatest work in the hard times of your life. Amen. You better talk to me, somebody that's true. Amen. You can look back over your life right now and know that had it not been for the Lord. <laughs> Good God. Had it not been for the Lord. Done His greatest work in the hardest times of my life. Amen. Some of you have encountered such pain that you wept until you had no more power to weep. Right. And like Martha and Mary when Lazarus died, when they saw Jesus, they said, you're too late. You're four days too late. You're too late, Jesus. Four days too late as a matter of fact. But can I tell you that that's when God does His greatest work when it's been dead four days. And they say there's no way it will raise up. There's no way you'll be resurrected. There's no way that marriage will come out of that hole. There's no way. But can I tell you that God does His greatest works when it's dead? Amen. And be dead for four days. Amen. And everybody says it'll never come out. Yes. Don't you ever say that to El Shaddai. I said, don't you ever say that to El Shaddai. Honey, when it's been dead four days, I'll tell you, the resurrection will show up. And what was dead will come alive. What was dead will come alive. What was dead will come alive. God does His best work in the hardest times of our lives. And some of you ought to look back over your life right now and realize, had it not been for the Lord, oh, hallelujah, had it not been for the Lord, I'd have never survived the ordeal that I've been through. Can I get a witness in this house? Now you listen, listen to me. Listen, listen, listen to me. Listen, listen. On the screen. Whatever drives us to God is always good for us. Always. 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 
And nothing does this more effectively than an enemy. And when he has come and taken. Amen. And it's called pain in our lives. Nothing does it better than an enemy that's taken. And it's caused you pain. And God will use what the enemy meant for evil. Turn it around for our good. If you will not allow the pain to take you out of the game. Hallelujah. Because there's pain in recovery. But I'm going to say it again. There is recovery in the pain. If you'll continue to pursue. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've got to understand that the enemy is part of God's plan. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 8. Paul wrote these words. He said, had they known, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. Had they known there was going to be a third day, the rising up, had they known there was going to be a recovery. I, 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 said, had they, oh, oh, I, I said, had they known there was going to be a recovery, they'd have never crucified the Lord of glory. Had they known the power and the effect of the blood that spilled from the sinless body of the Son of God, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. Had they known there was going to be an Acts chapter 2 and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Suddenly there come a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it set upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance had they known that Jesus was going to sin one just like him they would have never crucified the Lord of glory Never. Never. Amen. Had they known there was going to be recovery. See, you, you've got to understand the enemy is part of God's plan. You can't let the pain take you out of the game and miss the recovery. Good God. Yes, there's pain in the recovery. But there is recovery from the pain. You cannot... You, you've got to understand that the enemy is part of God's plan. You cannot let the pain take you out of the game and miss your recovery. Because your end is going to be a whole lot better than your beginning. That's a word for somebody. If they'll just reach out there and grab that bad boy right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> when God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, He brought them out of Egypt. A land of not enough or land a land of not enough and he brought them into a land of just enough which was the wilderness where he fed them a man of a on high and water out of a rock and eventually took them into a land of, of more than enough to a land flowing with milk and honey but the problem was when they got to the land that God said was theirs there were giants in the land enemy held territory but God had told them the land is yours it's yours I've given it to you. Go and possess it. And so it is with you and I. This is me. God promised the land for you and I. But the enemy is between you and it. Pain is between you and your recovery. Pain is between you and your recovery. When the twelve spies came back from viewing the land. They saw that the land was just exactly like God said it was. A land flowing with milk and honey. Until now the twelve spies came back with an evil report. And they said there's giants in the land. And we saw, we, we saw the giants and we were as grasshoppers in our own sight. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. That's the level the enemy wants to fight you on. Seeing yourself as puny, a weakling, worthless, a nobody. Defeated. Scum. Come on. Talk to me, preacher. Come on. But there was two men that rose up. Joshua and Caleb. And they said, wait a minute. 
We are well able to go in and possess the land. We are well able. Have I got any well able able people in this building? Have I got any well able people in this building? Have I got anybody that can look back and say, Our God is able. 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 We are well able to overcome this pain. You are well able to overcome the pain. Hallelujah. And make it to recovery. God Almighty. I tell you right now, I'm going I, I think I'm just, I'm gonna think I'm gonna take this CD, turn got my dirt on. Nobody have it, take it for myself. Take it for myself. Y'all don't need it. I don't need it. Y'all don't need it. You don't think I have pain? You better get in the real world, brother. You better get in the real world. I got pain just like you got pain. But I learned a long time ago the only way I'm gonna overcome the pain is refuse to be taken out of the game, continue to pursue until I overtake what's trying to overtake me. Hallelujah. And I will end up in recovery. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I will end up in recovery. Carol Ann, we will end up in recovery. And what was taken will be given back. Hallelujah. Press down, shake and get the money over. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Blessed be God. Preaching to crazy. I know I'm crazy. But I believe what I'm preaching. God gave David the key. You want it? Go get it. Pursue. And if you pursue him long enough, you'll overtake him and you'll end up in recovery. Without fail. Without fail. Good God Almighty. See, you missed them two words right there. Without fail. Recover. Amen. Hallelujah. We're not going to fail, baby. You hear me? We're not going to fail. Give me five, mama. Hallelujah. We're not going to fail. No, 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 no. Without fail, we will recover. I said without fail, you will recover. I said without fail, you will recover. You will recover if you'll continue to pursue. You'll overtake and recover. Without fail. Without fail, you will. You will recover. Hallelujah. Look on the screen. Next statement, man. This fits right in you right now. See, it's not God's will. It's not God's will that you lose ever. Oh, somebody say it's not God's will that I lose ever. Why? Because Paul said, now thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Somebody ought to give him praise right there. Right there. Somebody ought to give him praise right there. It is not God's will that you lose ever. 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 Somebody shout ever. Ever. <laughs> Hallelujah. God told David, you want it back? Pursue. You shall surely overtake and without fail you will recover. You have a promise from God that you will get the victory. But not without pain. And not without the and not without a fight. You'll have to fight the good fight of faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you will not allow the pain to take you out of the game, if you pursue, you will surely overtake. And without fail, you will recover. There's a process from pain to recover. Again, there's always pain in the recovery. Mm -hmm. But there is recovery from the pain if you choose to recover. Wow. Listen to me. You want to just listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. Too many times we we get so wrapped up, we'll throw a twist in this, in in the in pursuing the goal. In in in, in, in really pursuing the recovery, the goal. That we miss the opportunity to stop and be thankful for the things that we've already achieved along the way. Wow. While you are pressing through, while you are pursuing through the pain toward recovery, look at me. Determination is critical in achieving anything. You've got to be determined no matter what. You've got to have the spirit of determination to get through it. It's critical. But you need to stop every now and then. Along the way. And, 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 and towards your, to, toward recovery. 
and look back at the ground that you've already covered. Come on. And applaud yourself that you made it thus far. In other words, stop along the way and give God praise. Hallelujah. Even when the goal recovery is only a distant blur. Stop along the way and while you're in the pain of recovery, give God praise for the little progress in the process. Are you listening to me? Sometimes you've got to stop along the way and look back and see the ground that you've already covered. It may not be just a little bit, but thank God it was a little bit more than it was yesterday. I've gone a little bit further today. It may not be but a half a step, but I'm going to stop along the way to my recovery, and I'm going to look back, and I'm going to see the ground I've already covered, and I'm going to go ahead and applaud myself, hallelujah, because I'm going to give God praise for the little progress in the process. There's a process out of pain. i got to pursue. i got to pursue. i got to keep on walking. i got to keep on walking until I overtake it. Amen. And I end up in recovery. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Give me five, Mama. Glory to God, hallelujah. Look back and see what you've already achieved on your way to recovery. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Boy, I tell you, this is so good. I, I tell you, I preach myself happy here today. Thank God. I'm glad I come to church today. You probably ain't glad you came, but I sure am glad I came. Are you listening to me? I don't know if you are or not. Can I go a little bit more? Say, yeah, preacher. Can I go a little bit more? Yeah, Can I close it out with Psalms 13? Can I close it out with Psalms 13? I know it could. Thank you. I can tell you're excited. <laughs> <laughs> Let me close with Psalm 13. I'm going to wrap it up with this. Watch now. Watch, watch this. Watch. David. David prays for, for help. Watch now. Watch. Season of pain. He prays for help because his enemies are exalting <laughs> over his pain. My God. Psalm 13, verse 1 and 2 on the screen. How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord? Forever? Anybody ever been there? Anybody ever thought the Lord forsook you? Come on, talk to me, somebody. Anybody ever learned? Anybody ever, ever, ever asked the Lord, how long is this night going to last? Yeah. Where are you, God? Or some of y'all, y'all, y'all act like you, you ain't real anyway. This is what, 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 how long wilt thou, for, how long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? God. How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Look at those two verses. There's nothing more weary and painful than when, when hell begins to rejoice over my loss, over my affliction, over my pain, over my problem. There's nothing more weary than when hell begins to exalt over my problem and pain. I go through every day in my mind trying to come up with a solution for my problem. David said, my heart is full of, full of sorrow daily. How long shall my enemy exalt over me, oh God? How long? How long are they going to exalt over my pain? How long? Anybody ever been there? Well, you're going to actually hear the enemy exalting over your pain. If I, can I get a witness in the house? Can I just get a witness from some people that have been real with me today? Some of y'all ain't never been through anything that severe yet. Some of you have. Some of you have heard, actually heard the demons of hell laughing, rejoicing over your pain. You had wept till you had no more power to weep and the enemy was still exalting over you. Still rejoicing over your pain. Still rejoicing over your calamity. Still rejoicing over your adversity. Still rejoicing over your problem. Still rejoicing. Exalting themselves over you when you're crying, oh God, how long? Will you hide your face from me, oh God? How long? How long? How long? Million dollar question is what, what do I do? What do I do as I pursue to recovery? And the enemy of hell, the demons of hell are exalted, rejoicing over my pain. What do I do when I when 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 I when, when I pursue to recover it and the pain is so intense? Here's what you do. Come to me. You gotta know where to go and to whom to go to. I don't have to have any special abilities. I don't have to have the answer to my problems. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And when all hell is exalting over your pain, 
your problem, your trouble, and you can't get a hold of the preacher, and your prayer partner's out of town, and it's three days until Sunday morning service, and you're back against the wall, and the enemy's exalting over your pain, and the pain is about to take you out of the game. Here's what you got to do. you got to run to the rock of your salvation. Hallelujah. Proverbs 18 and 10. The name of the Lord is a strong power, and the righteous, they're not called to it, they're not drawn to it, they're not persuaded to it. The righteous run into it and is safe. You got to run into the name because there's covering in the name. You got to run into the name. Psalm 27, David said, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God because He's a very present help in time of trouble. Hallelujah! Run to the rock of your salvation. All hell is exalting over your pain. Hallelujah. Watch, watch, watch. David said, How long will my enemy be exalted over me? Verse 3. Verse 3, let me finish. They have six verses in this psalm. David said, Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. I'm going to die if you don't come. I'm going to die if you don't do something. Lest my enemy say I prevailed against him. And those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord because he hath dealt bountifully with me. Oh God, watch, watch. In other words, David said, as long as I got a word in my heart and a praise in my mouth, I can silence the voice of my enemy. I can silence the voice of every demon of hell. As long as I have a continual inflow of the word and a continual outflow of praise, I can pursue and I can surely overcome and I can without fail recover. I got to tell you, you got a weapon in your mouth. I said, you got a weapon in your mouth. And David said, I have trusted in your mercy. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing unto the Lord. I will rejoice in my salvation. I will sing unto the Lord. While the enemy is exalting over my pain, I refuse to let the enemy take me out of the game. I refuse to allow the pain to remove me out of the game. And as long as I got a continual inflow and a continual outflow, Flow. I will praise God and I'll pursue and I'll overtake and I will without fail recover because I will sing while the enemy exalts over my pain. I will sing while I'm in pain toward recovery and I will sing when I'm recovered from the pain. But I will sing. I will sing. I will sing. I will sing. One man can preach his heart out out here and y'all just sit there and look at him. I'll see him. <laughs> when you refuse to let the pain take you out of the game, you're just preaching. You're just preaching. When you refuse to allow the pain to take you out of the pursuit, and you continue to overtake and press the word to recovery, there comes a moment with the preaching. There comes a moment when hell realizes that you're not one of them that will run and hide and stay home from church. Oh God, there'll come a moment when hell will realize that you're not one of those who will be silenced. Then hell will come to realize as long as you have a continual inflow of the word, you're going to have a continual outflow of praise. Hell will realize you're not one of them Sunday morning glories. You're not one of them every once in a while people. And there'll come a moment in your life if you refuse to allow the pain to take you out of the game and you continue to pursue, you continue to pursue, you continue to be a pursue, you'll begin to overtake and you'll begin to without fail recover all. And but there'll come a moment before you ever recover all, before you ever, before you ever enter that place of recovery, that hell will realize that you're not like everybody else. Hell will realize you do mean business. Hell will realize you're not going to be stopped. It doesn't matter who walked out on you, no matter who gave up on you, no matter how dark it is, no matter how bad it is, no matter how severe the pain is, no matter how much longer you wept, hell will realize that, hey. You're in this thing for the long haul. And he will realize you're not going to be silenced no matter what. What do you think, old brother? Eh? Come on. 
There'll come a moment, and you didn't, you didn't know it, but there'll come a moment in your pain because you continue to pursue. You didn't probably even, didn't even, you probably didn't even draw reference to this formula. Pursue, overtake, become. You probably didn't enter your mind. But hell knew something was up. Hell can, if there'll come a moment when hell realizes you are going to, you are going to recover. <laughs> you are going to recover. There'll come a moment when hell realizes that you refuse to allow the pain to take you out of the game. You kept coming through those double doors. Kept coming to that platform. Kept going out and kept coming back. 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 And there'll come a moment when hell began to realize and she is real. She is real. <laughs> Y'all probably don't know what I'm talking about. Glory to God. Because most folk, they'll run, turn the lights out, pull the shade, and tell you, I'm not home. And the whole time, the enemy is exhausting over your pain. And you have the key to overcome it. Pursue. Overtake. Without fail. Recover. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, but I tell you what, I have preached. Y'all, y'all ought to give me a raise and vote me in five more years after today. <laughs> y'all don't want to admit that. <laughs> y'all don't want to admit that I've been in your living room today. But everybody here has been. been everybody here has been in this message today. I don't care if you're saved or unsaved. You've been in this message today. You're right here, buddy. You're right here today. You can't escape this one. Because, buddy, we've all been there, done that. Wore the, wore the t-shirt, bought the hat and all that. We've all been here. Talk to me, lady. God, talk to me. all been there, done that. Ain't we, girl? You know what pain's all about? Don't you? But you also tasted recovery. <laughs> all pain in recovery. But you can recover from the pain choose to do that. If you choose to do that, when you go. Amen. 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 See those tears running down your face right now? You know the heat bottle on every one of those tears? Put them in a bottle. Every tear has a significance to God. Every tear has a different meaning. And he bottles that up. And one day, one day, he's going to uncap the bottle. Yes. And so he's going to wipe the last tear from your eye. Yes. And say, honey, this, and he's going to show you these tears, what they meant when you shed those tears yes. to Almighty God. You hear me, Lady God? Now, there's pain in recovery. You, you've had your share of pain. You have. You have. Some of it may be self inflicted, some of it wasn't, but you've had your share of pain. Had your share. There's pain in there's pain in recovery. Amen. But you will recover from the pain. You will recover from the pain. Thus saith the Lord. You will recover. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Anybody here in the anybody here in what the Spirit of the Lord? Is saying to the church. Anybody hear what the Spirit is saying to the church? Anybody hear what, what the Holy Ghost is saying here today? Anybody hear? When you don't understand, you know what you got to do? And therefore, man. Amen. Continue to pursue. Last statement on the screen. I'm closing. Sometimes, sometimes, you have to be determined that you're going to outlast the enemy. Sometimes you got to be determined. Devil, I'm going to outlast you. I'm going to outlast you. Amen. When all the smoke clears and the last song sang, I'll still be standing, devil. I'll still be standing. Hallelujah. Come on, folks. You've got to have that kind of determination. You've got to have that kind of determination. Amen. Next to me. Hey, David. David started out with 600 men. 200 became weary and stayed behind. I wonder what he thought. Did he give up? Uh -uh. I'm going with what I got if I got to go by myself. He continued to follow the direction, the instruction that the Lord gave him. Pursue. And God didn't tell him to pursue with 600 men or four men. He said pursue. If you've got to go by yourself, pursue. 
And if you'll be faithful in your pursuit, you'll overtake. And you will without fail recover. Can I get an amen from somebody? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.